Now, there's one disease that is so ignored, yet so common, yet rarely tested, that you need to know about. In fact, this will explain a lot about your health. So I'm going to go through all the other problems that this one thing has created before I tell you what it is. Let's see if you can guess it. Number one, this problem will cause you to urinate excessively through the night. Okay, number one. Number two, it'll make you tired. Number three, it'll make you crave carbs through the day and cause you not to be able to go up for a long period of time without eating. It is the thing behind your belly fat and a slow metabolism or a set point where you just can't seem to lose a, past a certain weight. It's the thing behind a fatty liver, okay, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is the root cause of your brain fog, your lack of concentration, your mood being lowered in a state of anxiety or depression or being highly irritable. It is the reason behind dementia and forgetfulness. Uh, this thing increases your risk for cancer, for heart attacks, for clots, for strokes. It's the thing behind nerve problems like autonomic nervous system dysfunction, as well as peripheral neuropathy in the bottom of your feet or the palm of your hands. It also will greatly lower your immune system, increasing your risk for getting infections. It's behind lowered HDL, high LDL, specifically the dangerous LDL with the small dense particle size. It's behind high triglycerides as well as high cholesterol. It's also behind high blood pressure, which collectively all these symptoms are metabolic syndrome. It's behind polycystic ovarian syndrome where females start developing facial hair and get a deeper voice. It's definitely behind diabetes type 2. It's behind gallstones. All of these symptoms I just mentioned are directly coming from this one disease. And that disease is called hyperinsulinemia. Hyper meaning too much of something, insulin meaning insulin, anemia meaning the blood. It's too much insulin in your blood. What's really, really bizarre is doctors never focus on this. They don't test it. They test your blood sugars, your blood glucose levels, okay? Now, what's interesting about this high insulin level is that you can have high insulin levels for years and not have high blood sugar, okay? As you may know, what increases insulin is high-carb diets, sugar, and also frequent eating, right? The question is, how is it that some people can eat so much sugar and have normal blood glucose? An average person consumes 13 added teaspoons of sugar every single day. That's added. That has nothing to do with the other carbohydrates they're eating, okay? If we add in the other carbohydrates, which come out to roughly about 60 or 65% of the total calories. We're talking about a half a pound of sugar a day. We're talking about 68.7 teaspoons of sugar that all these carbohydrates turn into. I'm talking about like the wine. I'm talking about the bread, the pasta, the cereal, the crackers, the juice, all of these carbs turn into 68.7 teaspoons of sugar a day. How the heck can someone ever end up with normal blood sugars if they're consuming that much sugar? Well, the answer is insulin. Insulin is doing the work behind the scenes. Insulin is removing the sugar as fast as it's going in there to give you normal blood sugars. And so here the doctor is, checks your blood sugars. Oh, you're fine. You're healthy. But they didn't check the insulin that's working like a mad dog pumping out all this insulin and removing the sugar, converting it to cholesterol and fat and giving you all these other symptoms. So it really is going to go on for about 15 to 20 years before you start getting higher sugar because of a condition called insulin resistance. Okay. See, you have to realize that insulin is just as toxic as sugar in high amounts. And so the more insulin that your body pumps out, the more your body is going to protect itself from all this excess insulin. So it develops insulin resistance, okay? Now, the problem with that is you have certain parts of your body where you have very little amounts of insulin, okay? And you have other parts that you have high amounts of insulin. And so it's a double-edged sword because you get all the negative parts of insulin 
and you don't get all the positive parts of insulin because one of the purposes of insulin is to help you absorb nutrients. So basically your body is kind of starving of nutrients. It, it's not able to absorb amino acids correctly or even potassium or vitamin D because of this insulin resistance. And then the cells start to also lack getting fuel like in the mitochondria or the brain cells. So you start forgetting things. You start having all sorts of problems with your cells, but your blood sugars are initially normal and then they start to go out of whack. And so this insulin resistance condition is a protective mechanism. It's helping you survive. And in the process, your body has to make more insulin to compensate for this resistance. It's kind of like, let's say you had a barn in your backyard and it's on fire and uh, you have someone pouring gasoline on it, right? But you have someone else putting water out on it, right? And there's an unlimited amount of gasoline and they keep putting gasoline on and someone else has to keep coming with water to put this, this flame out. Eventually, the more gasoline you're going to put, it's going to start on fire and the whole thing is going to be burnt up. That's exactly what is happening with the average person. You've got all this insulin being pumped out. At first, it's able to handle this, these blood sugars, but eventually it's not. And so the person ends up being a diabetic. The doctor rarely changes their diet and removes the source of the high insulin. It's the high carb diet or the frequent meals. So here they are taking medication to artificially now uh, lower the blood sugars and take metformin to lower the uh, insulin resistance while they're consuming all these carbs. The requirement for medication keeps going higher and higher and they keep getting worse and worse and worse until they have gangrene on their feet and they have amputations, they go blind. So it's a very, very simple test that I highly recommend the next time you go to your doctor, ask for a fasting insulin test, okay? Uh, of course, you don't have to wait for that test. You can just start correcting it immediately. All you have to do is start the ketogenic plan and start doing intermittent fasting and your insulin is going to come down and you are going to be able to get rid of a lot of problems. There are hundreds of thousands of people uh, worldwide that are on keto and doing intermittent fasting and getting rid of a lot of problems. In fact, we have over 6,000 success stories on our website. You can go to drberg.com and start reading them. But that's just a small sliver. There are many, many other people. I just recently started collecting success stories. I wish I would have started at the very, very beginning. But there's a really good book by Joseph Kraft, MD, that I highly recommend um, taking a look at. And I will put that link down below, which backs up all the things I'm talking about. But for you right now, the best thing to do is get on keto with intermittent fasting this video will explain exactly how to do it in a very simple way. Check it out.